Okay, Houston, right. we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. So how do you find where earthquakes happen? How do scientists do this? That's what we're going to talk about because Houston, we don't have a problem. Hey, it all comes down to the P and S waves and the P and S wave times. Now remember, if you recall, P waves, they travel fastest. S waves, so primary waves, secondary waves, second fastest. And you can measure when they, on the seismometers, you can measure when a P wave hits and then when an S wave happens. And because we know how fast they move, how many miles per hour, kilometers per second, or whatever, we can figure out the difference between when they land. So the step one is that. And I think what's going to work best is I'm going to walk you through each of these steps. So how do we find the epicenter of an earthquake? Well, we have to look at these S and P waves. We have a, 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 an earthquake that happened, and it was measured at three locations, at Balboa Heights, Panama, Boulder, Colorado, and Mexico City. And we've got uh, different SP charts. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some cool stuff. Now remember, there's primary waves, and the primary waves are the waves that rely first, the fastest ones, and the secondary waves are the ones that arrive second. So the first step is to determine the number of minutes, how, the distance between, or the time between the arrival of the P wave and the arrival of the S wave. Now let me show you mathematically or sort of graphically how I'll do this. The first thing I want to do is I want to actually figure out what this sort of scale is from a centimeter. So I've got a ruler here, as you can see, and I'm going to measure, each of these, by the way, is one minute, one minute, two minute, three minute, four minute, five minute. I'm going to measure five minutes of, uh, in terms of distance, so the, uh, from zero to, uh, five looks to me like it's pretty close to um, eight centimeters, right? Yeah, so that's eight centimeters. So I'm going to say this. I'm going to say eight centimeters is equal to five minutes. If I divide these, so I've got a calculator here, and I take eight divided by five, you'll see how this will play a role. That's 1.6. That means there's 1.6 centimeters is equal to one minute. You'll see how that will play a role when we're solving this problem. So now what I want to do is I want to measure the distance from the P to the S wave. We've got this nice dashed line, at least on the first one. I'm going to measure this, and I see that I'm at 76, or 7.6 centimeters. So watch what I do. I'm going to say 7.6 centimeters. I'm going to divide it by 1.6 centimeters per minute. The centimeters cancel, and I get minutes. So I get 7.6 divided by 1.6 gives me 4.75 minutes. Now I'm going to put that like on a table. I've got a table down here. You could actually do the arrival time, the S-ray, but I'm going to put this number here as the difference between the P and S wave. This is the time. This is 4.75 minutes. I'm going to repeat that process for Boulder and for Mexico City. So when I measure Boulder, right, I'm gonna, now I'm going to line this up. I get my ruler thing. I'm going to like P and S. Got it. And I'm going to measure the distance here. Distance between here and here is 4 centimeters. I'm going to divide by 1.6. Calculator 4 divided by 1.6 gives me 2.5, so 2 and a half minutes. I'm going to write that down here. I'm going fast. But when you do this, you're gonna you're gonna do this in class. Uh, you're gonna be fine. Do the same thing now for Mexico City, Mexico, Ciudad de Mexico, see, and S. I then find the distance between here and here, and I get looks like it's 5.5. So I say 5.5 centimeters divided by 1.6, and I've got the the calculator that comes out to 3.4 minutes. I'm gonna put that here. Because now what I want to do is I want to find the distance to the epicenter with this time. Now there's a really cool graph thing that you're going to use, and the graph thing looks like this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out, so let's talk about this. Here we have travel time, and here we have epicenter distance. This is in times 10 to the third, that means thousands. Right, so this is 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, you get the idea. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take just a piece of paper. I'm going to fold a piece of paper. So I'm taking a piece of paper and folding it. All right.
and I'm going to work with my uh, my distances. The first one, if you recall, was 4.75 minutes. That's BH, uh, Balboa Heights. And what I want to do is I'm going to take this piece of paper. I'm going to line it up here. I'm going to actually 4.75 minutes. I'm going to look at this side right here. So if this is 5 and this is, I guess this is a weird 4.75. Three, six, so it's going to be like right here. So I'm going to line up this piece of paper. Watch how I do this. Watch, watch, watch. People, people, people. I'm going to put a line here because it's actually the gap between these two that matters. So I'm going to line this up. Let me actually put a, like a red dot so I can see that. I want to get where the gap between these is perfectly lined up. See how this line here lines up with this line here. And when I line that up, well, I get um, about... 3,200. So I'm going to go back to my paper here. If you recall this paper, I'm going to write 3,200 for Balboa Heights. Next one is two and a half minutes. I'm going to repeat this same process. So for two and a half minutes, all right, line up my paper again. So two and a half is here. Line it up, line it up, boom. Now I'm gonna like find the gap, find the gap, find, the, all right, this is pretty good. Ooh, that's pretty good there. And this comes out to, let's see, well, let's, let's do this. So this one is about 1600. So 1600, that's gonna be Boulder, Colorado. So let's write that down. So Boulder was 1600 kilometers. These are all in kilometers, right? And then we're gonna do 3.4 minutes for Mexico City. So 3.4 is like here. Line it up, line it up, people, 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 boom. So it's this last line. So I'm gonna kind of find the gap. Oh, that's pretty good. There. So it can be a little tricky. I'm gonna call it there. And that comes out to about 2,000. Let's say that that's 2,200 kilometers. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to now plot this on a map. So we've got these numbers. So let's, let's actually, here's the map, right? Here's BH. And at BH, I'm going to say that this is 3,200. That's where BH is. Mexico City was 2,200. And Boulder, Colorado was 1,600. So now what I'm gonna do is I've got a scale right here, right, this scale, and I'm gonna do one at a time. So let's do 3,200s down here. And I'm gonna, 3,200 is right here. Now you may have to take some time to really look at the scales, but I've seen this one before. I'm gonna take this compass, this is actually a compass, right? I'm gonna just line this up and screw the little doohickey in. Uh, boom. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this up. Now I, I've gotta line this up, I've gotta put it right on. I have to actually look careful. Mr. Bergman's gonna have his reading glasses on, so he's having a hard time here. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my pen in here, make an arc, all right? I'm gonna do that three times, and where they intersect is the winner. So the next one, that was 3,200. Let's do Boulder. Boulder was 1,600, so 1,600 would be here, right? So I'm gonna screw this back to 1,600, right there. Line this up. Again, I've gotta put it off screen, sorry about that, because I can't see close. And that's 1,600. And then I'm gonna do Mexico City, 2,200. Right there. And I'm gonna line that up on Mexico City. And do the arc, there we go. Now do you notice where they all come together? They've all come together here. It's not quite perfect, but it's pretty close. Where's the epicenter of this earthquake? It's where all three of them come together, or uh, maybe I, I wasn't, I did it fast, and so I got my numbers off just a skosh, but we're pretty close. This is the epicenter of the earthquake. There you have it. That's how you find the epicenter of a earthquake. And you're gonna be doing this in class, because Houston, we don't have a problem, because you are some smart cookies.